Hello, this is Bill Quadzi back with another PTQ going into the final round here. I want to show you my little calculation here. So we've got, let's see, last round we have one undefeated, next round we could have one or zero, and either way we're going to have four or five uh, four of us here. Three people with a record X and two are going to make the top eight. So if we win this one, we have a really small chance, but you can see our tiebreakers here. Of all the six and twos right now, <laughs> our tiebreakers are, are pretty abysmal. And that's what you get for losing early, because then you're always playing people who are of worse records than you could be if you won. Uh, so what we're really doing is playing for top 32. So if we, if we win this, we definitely make top 32. Look at this, like a sportscaster here. And if we lose, we get in this group, and then there's 40, over 40 people, almost 50, uh, contending for that spot. And our tiebreakers aren't the best, but maybe we get there. Who knows? We did start 6-2, and the 5-3s could go up to 6-3, and then we'd be there. So the last round kind of matters, uh, especially if we want to we prize out and make it all worth it. And there's that hair of a chance, like... 1 in 10,000 something that, that we uh, actually make it into the top 8. Most likely it'll be 8 of these, or a few of the people who are already 7 and 1 right now. Would you like to play first? Yeah, our deck is aggressive. Didn't show the list yet, but we'll see it in sideboarding. One of the best hands I've seen to start with. Fan bearer out there. And then we'll lead with Nefcrop Entangler. The battlefield scavenger has a more or less an enter the battlefield effect. Since if you want to exert with the entangler, you play this first, you get to loot. Insult to injury is one of our bombs. And we actually have the real reason we're playing red. We'll see a couple of those later. There might be some minotaurs in this deck. There might be a few of them. Red is known for its minotaurs, I'll give it that. Here, we're just going to see if this resolves. If it doesn't, that's fine. If it does, then let's exert this turn. We're giving up one damage, but we don't want all this land. We don't need it. <clears throat> Cycling there. We don't need it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's get rid of a mountain. Yeah, getting up to six mana for insult to injury is a goal we could have. But that's just going to happen whether we like it or not. So this next turn we'd probably exert again, although that gives up on two damage. So we'll see here. Let's see. I doubt they'll block, maybe they do. And they might find a bigger creature, so this can't even attack next turn. So let's get rid of a planes. We get a cartouche. Interesting. What are the options next turn? It really just depends on what we could draw. But we could hold up Fan Bear. Yeah, let's put a cartouche on our Nef Crop Entangler. There aren't that many things that punish this, especially since we'll be tapping the Brawler. Like, one option is to attack and exert, and then afterwards fight with a cartouche of strength. But that's not all that likely. And no play. Maybe? Ah, they still have it, so now they kill Fan Bear. Our first creature, our one drop, is the thing they need to kill the most with Hooded Brawler. Well, for, let's save the insult to injury. We could get in 10 damage here, but even though that's a lot of damage, it gives up that 2 damage later. We can't kill the Hooded Brawler here. 
four, five, yeah, that's ten. And we also get to play the duelist. It might be worth it. Ultimately, I think it's not worth it. And we'll try to go for a bigger turn next turn. Yeah, that won't that won't do it, because insult to injury answers all of their stuff. Ooh, you know, we didn't have the land there, so I'm glad we drew it. And then we kill whichever. The double damage really helps that card be amazing. Yeah. Overkill. Okay, so here's the deck. And now we get to see them, the triple on-crop crasher. All of the white creatures are solid. The worst card in the deck is Hyena Pack. I've been siding it out. Pursue Glory's fine. A bunch of cartouches which go wide. Uh, Tawkrop Elite is great. Tormenting Voice, because uh, the aggro deck can just run into a couple too many lands and lose that way. And this discards, heck, uh, Injury. It can discard an extra land. It can discard even a True Heart Duelist if we're heavy on lands, to get it back. Initiates are great. Duelists are great. All of our two drops are great. Brute strength has been great. But what have I been doing? So sometimes I'll bring in Edifice of Authority. That was a really close call between playing one more creature that's not great and a really great edifice. Uh, it's been useful against gods and things like that. On the play, we either want Hyena Pack or Mighty Leap. And that worked out pretty well, that game. Fling has been useful in some matchups, but the real sideboard cards, I've, the only sideboard cards I've considered, maybe Hound Copish, but I haven't yet put that in, are, are these three guys. Mighty Leap, Fling, and Edifice. And if Mighty Leap is particularly good, then that works. But the tricks we have with all these exerters, we have a bunch of cartouches, which are kind of like tricks. Brute Strength, which gets in a bunch of extra damage, especially with a uh, first strike. We have two cartouches of solidarity. And the other tricks we have are Prepare and Jeru's Resolve, which both untap, and that has been incredible. I'm going to keep it the way it is. Maybe Hyena Pack is good, maybe not, but at least it's a creature. And none of our cards, our sideboard options, do anything if we don't have a board presence. Okay, much worse than our last hand. We have to look at what has to go right. We only have to draw planes. We're playing eight. We're going to draw it right away. <laughs> well, good. Good. We know they have sensor. They played that. They could have just a regular old counter spell. But. We'll still go for the True Heart Duelist here. Not the end of the world if they censor it. And otherwise, we're just playing another Fan Bearer, and that's pretty good. But not the best thing ever. Crab, I bet they brought that card in. Well, that's okay. So we get in one damage here, we get a bunch more creatures into play. That's kind of the weakness of Ancient Crab, it never kills anything. And there are a few creatures that just don't care about it, they exert through it. Gust Walker, Hooded Brawler. No, Soul Stinger, is it going to be a 4-5, or is it going to be a 2-3? Interesting. More options here. More and more options. So 
So we could make a 3-3 three, three attack and Vizier the Soul Stinger so it, it doesn't kill anything, right? Then we attack with everything. We get in three damage. Okay, but we also put in two more creatures. Then we've got fan bearers up uh, for the turn after. So we go wide, we get in some damage, and then next turn we can just keep up the fan bearers as we need them. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the play. can't get too punished here. And they're going to try to kill the True Heart Duelist. Which we might not care about. Do we even care about that? Do we care about the Duelist? We can bring it back. Yeah, well, we care about it. And we might as well bring back the Duelist to untap it. The only upside of bouncing Still Stinger there is maybe they misclick and put the counters on the Ancient Crab and that'll kill it. Oh no! They really want to kill one of these fan bearers. See, look at how priority of a target that was. Instead of going Cartouche Soul Stinger and killing True Heart Duelist, they just killed Ancient Crab. Or uh, Fan Bear, whatever it's called. game is not as easy as last game. Really awkward when you have to take a whole turn off not attacking. Angler Drake, too. Crushing the Duelist. Oh, we needed that first strike to get past the crab. There he is, one of our many on-crop crashers. Make the most mana efficient play here. We've got some reach. We've got that burn we can draw into, insult to injury, which is one of the reasons to torment there. Just draw closer to it. Here's big 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, so many cards now that we can't attack past. We can deal with one or two, but this is too many. Just too many right now. That's okay. Soon, we'll be tapping down Greater Sandworm. Because that thing hurts. That hurts more than Angler Drake. And we might be able to make a big attack here. Unless they play another big creature. The Hexproof guy, that's what beat me first round. Hexproof guy plus copy Hexproof guy. Seven. Seven is what we need here to cast everything and tap everything. We tap this, attack through this, pump, they block our biggest guy, which will be on crop crasher at four, and they take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Wow. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Good lord. Did I count that right? Forget about it. All right, make sure to exert everything that can. So carefully. Soul Stinger can't block. Everything's huge. And they say, thank goodness, we just barely survived. They say, thank goodness we're not dead here. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I mean, they, yeah, they should block the Crasher. Unless there's something else they really want to kill. What? Yeah, I mean, they just want to take the least damage possible. And we 
Brute Strength, the Duelist, and that's lethal. Wasn't sure we were going to win that, but that's the power of haste creatures that remove blockers. Anyway, I'll probably post this, but there won't be a top 8 draft unless I'm the luckiest dude alive. So, hope you enjoyed that brief deck tech and journey into a, a late round with a, with a great pool. Honestly, this could have been a 9-0, a 8-1 pool, but Scaled Behemoth is hard to beat. The other card that really gets us is um, Cartouche of Ambition, the black one. And the other deck that beat us had two Trials of Ambition. And then they were playing green-black, so they also had Cartouches of Strength and Ambition. And we just couldn't, couldn't come there. Bad games, they say. Yeah, it's rough when you get this late. And uh, you, you just m lose your last match to get into the prizes. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.